Okay, good morning everyone. I uh, would just like to thank you all for taking the time out to join us in our session this morning. I think we're uh, mostly all logged on and uh, registered uh, into the session. So uh, just to, to kick it off, um, a little introduction. My name is Pauline McGrellis. Uh, I uh, work as the Business Development Manager on behalf of the Involve Group. And this morning, I'm going to be taking you through our webinar that really is focused on the storage and distribution um, uh, category in terms of BRC. And I'm going to show you how the Involve group with its BRC manager module um, is actually helping the storage and distribution industry prepare for issue three, which is uh, uh, imminently upon us now in February uh, and comes out in February itself. So uh, without further ado, um, I'd just like to um, share a little bit of an agenda with you this morning. Uh, we're going to probably for about 40, 45 minutes, hopefully I'll keep this session to uh, that time frame, but I'd like to share with you this morning just a wee bit about the Involve Group, who we are. Uh, we'll look at some of the key focuses for the storage and distribution category and what that means to your organizations. Uh, you've probably now already done a lot of work in uh, uh, researching this and um, you know talking with your BRC specialists, etc. Um, you know, so there may not be no surprises there, but again, you know, we what we intend to do this morning is to look at uh, the traditional ways uh, of people uh, or how uh, organisations actually manage um, compliance for BRC and that the common issues with uh, these methods that people are using and how our BRC manager module actually helps to to resolve these issues and reduce your your whole compliance risk uh, in terms of your BRC audits. We'll do this through a live demonstration of our quality and com uh, compliance management platform and towards the end of the webinar we will have a question and answer session uh, where you can put forward your questions that you may have uh, that fall out of the, uh, you know, the time this morning. So uh, just on that point, um, to the right-hand side of your GoToWebinar portal, uh, you will actually uh, see a little questions uh, section. So uh, if you've got any questions, just uh, uh, open this up and pop your questions in there and they will come through to us accordingly. Okay, so just to look at the Involve group at a, a, grant, at a glance, um, some of you guys may have already heard of us. Uh, you know, we have been working now for about 12 years, uh, you're primarily within the food uh, industry, um, uh, to, to, to actually help organizations manage uh, compliance, quality and compliance within their organizations. Now, we have a few different products within our, our, our platform, um, or our suite of products, should I say, and uh, the first one there, we, we actually have our paperless quality and compliance management platform for BRC certified industries. This is called BRC Manager and this is what we are going to focus on this morning. And uh, we also provide technology as part of your, your compliance and uh, you know the requirements for compliance. Uh, part of that will be training and documentation sign off. Um, and uh, so from the whole training perspective, what we also offer is a uh, technology that allows you, it's an interactive uh, keypad system that allows you to provide group training back to uh, your, your staff um, internally within your own organization. Um, and to support that and back that up, we also um, have a suite uh, of um, training courses, health and safety and food safety training courses that we offer as part of a, a courseware catalog, which can also be run through the keypad system. And it also can be delivered via e-learning and also tablet delivery, but we'll explore this a wee bit further later on. So it really is, I suppose, to uh, you know let you know in our product, uh, let's say, toolkit that uh, that we have various different solutions that can actually help you manage the the, the whole area of uh, compliance itself, quality and compliance. Just some of the customers that we're we're, we're helping in their efforts to uh, manage their compliance. Uh, just pick out a couple uh, there. Most of you probably have heard of Moy Park. Um, we're actually currently through a project at the minute uh, where where we're deploying our uh, paperless platform through the uh, well there's four four out of six sites at the minute that uh, they that the project has uh, 
uh, actually deployed. So, uh, and then looking at um, some other CSM bakery products. Again, they've got a couple of sites that use the platform. Hyder Foods, uh, again, a couple of sites uh, they, which they use for compliance management as well. So, some of these uh, companies you will recognise. Um, you know, we've re recently taken on board long lane deliveries in terms of the. Uh, in terms of the um, storage and distribution uh, sector itself and are currently entering um, conversations with agro merchants groups as well. So uh, yeah, you know, a lot of the storage and distribution um, companies are now starting to uh, express the interest in, in working with us uh, in terms of their own compliance. So let's take a, wee, uh, a bit of a look at the key focus for issue three. Well, as we all know, it's, uh, as I mentioned, imminently upon us and uh, the BRC are actually trying to bring more consistency with the requirements for, the, for all the BRC global standards and as such uh, are now introducing the unannounced audits and uh, graded um, scoring audits for uh, the storage and distribution sector um, or category should I say. And this really uh, is by way of a uh, grading system that's been put in place at the minute. Um, uh, and essentially, the, the, the grading system really, I suppose, the, uh, the nuts and bolts of it really is that the, the higher the number of non-conformances for your organization that, that come out of your audit, uh, the lower the grade will be. This really gives you a, a bit of a, an idea on the grading system. Um, you have your grading scores across the uh, uh, down the left hand side there. The number of non-conformities that actually uh, make that score, and uh, when you have to provide the evidence of your corrective actions and your root cause analysis um, within um, you know that given period itself. Now, again, we always recommend that you uh, you talk to your um, you know the BRC and make sure that you understand uh, what a minor and a major uh, non-conformance is. But uh, you know, again, you know this gives you a little bit of a guideline there. Um, just in terms of identifying the different scores, there you have, uh, let's say, your AA and your AA plus. Um, uh, a lot of uh, a lot of organisations now are actually starting to push you down. Um, we see in the food uh, food industry with the food standard that they're pushing them down uh, an unannounced route in terms of their BRC audits. So the AA is where you have your announced audits and your AA plus, the plus symbol actually really identifies that it's unannounced itself for, for those of you who haven't actually um, uh, research that yet. So uh, we just touch on um, going forward now some of the, uh, let's say, the traditional systems that are typically used uh, by manufacturing companies and storage and distribution companies to uh, manage their, their, their whole um, compliance and, and quality itself. Now this is typically through the use of uh, spreadsheet and paper-based processes. So you know what we tend to have is uh, like training matrices, um, you may within the organization and, and what we find is, is several training matrices may be, be in operation uh, at any one given time depending on the nature of the training. So it could be that you have your induction training that HR actually uh, provides, your health and safety training that maybe your H&S uh, H officer uh, provides as well and any food safety uh, training as the need may be. So all that information as to who's done what and completed uh, what elements of training are, are normally recorded on spreadsheets and actually updated accordingly in a, a particular matrix. Um, and then the, uh, a lot of the training, 80% of training, um, certainly within the food industry, is actually delivered through the use of paper documents and uh, the employees sign off the paper documents uh, and then it is put into storage storage cabinets, uh, you know, for the auditors when they arrive, so that you have the the, the evidence and the certified copies of any certificate, uh, certified training, uh, the certificates available to hand itself. So um, uh, that's really, uh, I suppose, in terms of your your compliance training. If we look at our audits, and as we're uh, encouraged to to do our regular audits, again the same methods are in process, whereby we have a spreadsheet to to define and and to list the audit schedule and audits actually carried out by means of uh, checklists that are uh, based on, on paper and attached to a clipboard and um, you know as we go around the factory we, we uh, check off the uh, checklist itself and provide the information and then go back into the spreadsheet and update any spreadsheet and, and information that, that, that we need to apply to that to, to, to mark it off as closed and done on the outcomes that come from it. 
We have, again, a similar process for our supplier, supplier documentation whereby you have suppliers and managing the documentation and the requirements for uh, documentation that BRC actually have. Now that can be, uh, you know, whether it is, I know that there's a, a few food companies sitting on this this morning, so uh, I thought it was uh, applicable to touch on that. So your, your um, supplier documentation requirements, there, you know, your suppliers have the plans, your BRC certification, uh, maybe the insurance plans, um, liability insurance, etc., etc. So again, we have other spreadsheets that, that, that are uh, set up to manage these particular uh, requirements and which uh, suppliers have actually provided us with the, the uh, documents that we do actually need. And again, there may be somebody uh, sitting in the company that manages that process separate to any training or indeed any auditing um, process itself. So uh, what we really aim to do is uh, to work with you to address some of the challenges that uh, as we've talked to other food companies and other manufacturing companies and organizations like yourself that now have to manage that whole compliance and provide, e provide evidence back that, that, that you are compliant in all the different areas. Well, we have found that um, in talking with clients that there, there, there comes quite a, a multitude of issues uh, around managing compliance via traditional paper-based and, and spreadsheet process. Uh, you know, they talk to us about the, the, the workload um, that comes along with, okay, doing things on paper and then having to go back and update it on spreadsheets. The paperwork, the mountain of paperwork um, that uh, they, they end up managing on a, an annual basis. And, you know, even people like, you know, from a, a storage perspective, having to store store that information for the auditors when they arrive. So, um, you know, with BRC Manager uh, module itself, we're, we're going to show you ways that, uh, that we can bring this all uh, into your organization paperless and, uh, you know, avoid the need for, for spending a lot of time updating different actions on spreadsheets, etc., etc. So, uh, you know, one of the things too that a lot of people talk to us about is uh, that they've no idea how compliant that their site is in terms of, uh, you know, their overall training uh, requirements and auditing requirements as well, and even down to their supplier documentation. So, uh, you know, it's kind of a finger in the air. You know, we think that we're doing okay, and um, when we do our audits, uh, we get through the audits and, and we maintain the grade that we, we, we actually have. So, you know, it's always a pat on the back, well done. But how long have you actually uh, spent preparing for that audit uh, that was announced at a time, uh, you know, that, uh, that you could prepare for? Um, you know, I, I think a lot of the time these days, it's really about living and breathing um, the compliance on a daily basis, so that if an auditor actually arrived on your site unannounced, um, you know, you really don't have any um, areas to, to, to think about or worry about, because with our BRC Manager module, you, you have visibility to all your exposed areas, so that you can proactively manage them in preparation for them audits. So, um, you know, that, that's one of the uh, huge benefits um, really to the platform itself and the paperless platform. Uh, we talked a wee bit about chasing supplier documentation and that. Uh, people talk to us about how they, they have no visibility as to them uh, exposed areas at any given time. And, uh, you know, without the, the, the use of spreadsheets and running through paper copies of, uh, you know, okay, an audit that had maybe a few corrective actions and, and, and not filing that uh, particular piece of information or, or document until the corrective actions have been closed down. So we're going to show you ways that you can uh, run simple reports and have data dashboards to, to uh, have full visibility for senior managers um, that they can uh, have total visibility as to the exposed areas at any, any particular time itself. One of the key things that people talk to us about, uh, especially when an auditor is on site and, and doing audits, uh, you know, uh, within the um, environment itself, is that when they go to find a piece, uh, a particular piece of uh, paperwork, that uh, it could be a training uh, document sign-off, and. Uh, <laughs> Um, when, let's say, especially when people get married and change their name, okay, maybe the, the information hasn't been stored in the right in the right folder when the auditor is on site and we go to locate that uh, that uh, document, uh, we can't find it because it's actually been moved to another another folder. So, again, these things can actually, uh, you know, affect um, your non-conformances in terms of, um, uh, you know, an auditor being on site and in turn actually uh, impact on the grading that you do get the more
or non-conformances that you have, then they, they lower the grade that uh, will be applied to the audit itself. Okay, so uh, and I think one of the key things really is uh, that time that you spend preparing for audits, whether they are BRC audits or customer audits, um, with our BRC module, okay, we're managing the whole BRC process, but with our pa uh, paperless quality and man um, compliance management platform, you can manage any uh, process, whether it be, uh, you know, customer audits or internal audits that you actually have uh, within uh, the organization to do as well. And as I mentioned, a lot of our clients are, are really now starting to push us to go unannounced now because they, they want to have full confidence uh, in, uh, I suppose, the, 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 the fact that you are living and breathing compliance on a daily basis and not a few weeks before they arrive on site to, to do their audit. So uh, that, that's what we're aiming to uh, show you today is how through the uh, uh, quality and compliance management solution offered by the Involve Group and with the use of the BRC Manager module, how we bring this all into a single centralized system to allow you to manage that process on a daily basis. So what do you get within the, uh, the platform itself? Well, uh, it comes with um, the ability to manage all your employee training plans, documentation that is required for uh, employee training. Uh, as I mentioned, we also have a, a set of ready-to-go courses, whether they be health and safety, from manual handling, slips, trips and falls, working at heights, etc. You know, so them courses have already been developed uh, and are ready for use um, you know, within your company as well, if, if you have the requirement for training there. Uh, we also have the automated compliance training matrix as we run these courses from within our platform and or indeed through the, uh, the, the group technology, the group uh, keypad technology. We have the automated uh, compliance training matrix that as, as a course is completed, that actually automatically updates onto your, uh, your training matrix. So there's no need to um, go and update that separately outside of uh, the, the, the platform itself. We have the ability to run your setup your internal audits, your audit schedule, manage your corrective actions from the platform, and also the ability with our tablet apps to uh, our tablet applications to uh, actually conduct your your, your audits and uh, create your corrective actions from the tablet, so that you've got photographic evidence and that um, you know for for the audits itself and the corrective actions and manage them through. And and I'm going to show you the, all this through the, uh, the 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 brief demo that we do will do later on. Again, we have supplier document management um, and automated follow-up emails available within, so we can set up our suppliers and, and automatically email them as to the, uh, the required documents that, that we require from them. And we have our BRC self-assessment templates preloaded into the platform so that you can run them uh, self-assessments from the tablet uh, on a regular basis as well. And any vulnerability assessments, the needs for them, uh, again, that is available within the uh, um, application itself. So we're going to at this point just pop into the uh, the platform. Um, I'm going to take you through and just show you a little bit about the learning management, audit management, internal audit templates, uh, the corrective actions there and the supplier control and then we'll take a wee look at the um, some screenshots that I have of our tablet apps because it's uh, obviously impossible without having the tablet in front of you to show you that. So what I'm going to do now is to log on to our platform. This is uh, everybody that has a license for the platform has got their own login name so that everything is uh, marked and stamped, date and time stamped of uh, what has happened in the in the uh, activity that happens within the platform. So I'm just going to pop in here to my demo account and open. This is just a, a sample de uh, demo de database that I have created, you know, particular, uh, just specifically for demo purposes. So uh, um, you will have a lot more information maybe than I would have actually set up, but it'll give you a good idea of how it works. So just to exp explain a little bit about the layout of the platform, um, again, we can see who I'm logged in up here and, um, you know, we can actually adjust the, uh, the cosmetic feel a little bit of the platform as well. Um, 
We have growing across the top here uh, some tabs, what we refer to as tabs. So if, if you just think about these as um, storing cabinets of information relating to that particular area and anything that you want to find relating to learning or training, then we will find in here all our documents we will find in the document manager. Anything relating to the audit or auditing side of things then will be in the audit management section. Our audit manager and our learning manager actually uh, gives a dashboard of the activity that is happening and I will come back to that in a second. I, I, I just want to pop over here first of all and start at this end. Um, I'm just going to pick out the key areas uh, at the moment but again we, we have the option um, you know, to look further at this and, and do one-to-one -one sessions if, if that's what you would like to do after the session itself. So uh, just from the directory side, this is the area that we actually can set up our employees all our lists of employees and what we can do then is to uh, define the training plans that is applicable for the employees. We set up our managers because our managers then take responsibility for the employees and when we set it up like this we're then able to see uh, what uh, training procedures etc that the managers are responsible for um, that has happened in their given areas so or not happened as the case may be. We set up our suppliers and we can identify the documentation that is uh, required for from uh, our yes from our suppliers so here I've got a list of, of suppliers that I have here um, I'm just going to for food co uh, customers um, actually just briefly take us in here I've got the baker's oven here what I want to do is to actually look and see the documentation that I require from this uh, supplier what they have completed, what they have not completed uh, and again this all happens once I set it up and attach the, uh, the document uh, that is required an automatic email pops off to the supplier and asks them to produce that. They can log on to the platform, their own and only their own part of the platform and upload the documentation itself and then you get an automatic email back to say that the, uh, the customer or the supplier has actually uploaded that piece of documentation. So you know you're removing the whole uh, having to chase that supplier for the information itself. So um, you know this is how that works. I'm just going to look at the BRC certificate there. Uh, I'm going to download that and actually have a look at the certificate there. That's just a, a BRC a, a sample. BRC um, certificate there. So again, any uh, required documentation that you actually need from suppliers or, or even people that you work with, then uh, that is the area that we actually set that up within the system. Okay, um, documentation manager or document manager that we have here. Um, I am going to, oh, I beg your pardon, sorry, I have a, a time out on the sessions itself. So just let me log back in again. Okay, apologies about that. I've been having a wee bit of problem with my internet this morning too. I was hoping that I would get away with it, so um, just bear with me, guys. Anyway, so uh, yes, yeah, so uh, into your document management. And uh, what we see here, we can have uh, our lists of live documents, archive documents, document uh, pending approval, and document manager, management reports there. So essentially what we can have is the, the approval process where uh, this is again, you know, maybe your policies or, uh, you know, you can actually have your, your different document groups, whether they're standard operating procedures, work instructions, uh, policies, or just, you know, any document group that you have. Have, uh, that you use uh, within the organization itself then you group them documents and uh, what you can do is have a, an approval process whereby the document doesn't go live until uh, it's been authorized um, by the person responsible or that takes accountability for that documentation itself. Now this really ensures we have like a, a document control process uh, within the uh, platform itself. Now I am going to look at this let's say I, I take one of these um, uh, documents I'm going to take the work instruction here and this is a cleaning workstation instruction um, now this could be a, a forklift um, uh, you know operating a forklift etc um, uh, you know whatever that you need to actually have there so what we have here um, actually I wonder if I've got a um, I beg your pardon I, I'm just going to go in uh, and see I'm sure I've got a uh, actually clocking in and clocking out I think I've got one um, uh, 
document there, uh, example, a good example that we can use. So what we have is we um, we name, we give the document a title, we have a revision. Uh, what you will um, be bound to do is to, to, to make sure that you provide refresher training on all your, your procedures and your documentation, um, you know, as required by the BRC. So. Um, what we do is we define uh, the, re the revision number, the when the document was created, uh, the average training period we can define as well because uh, uh, the auditors are now uh, starting to look at the overall um, annual um, training hours that we have actually put into uh, and invested in each uh, member of staff itself. So we're, we have the ability to define how long an average duration of the um, the training itself. We have a grace period there. Now this is just a reasonable amount of time that we expect that training or that document to be signed off before it starts impacting on our compliance levels. We have a document owner and we have the validity period of the document, uh, whether that be you know a year, and then we can review it uh, as, as according to, to your um, needs there, uh, whether that be two years. So this is really where uh, the document needs to be reviewed to, to make sure that you you know that we have actually included all aspects or any changes in legislation etc cetera, etc cetera, um, you know to that given document itself we have the uh, document status there if we look at the supporting file um, this is the uh, file how to draw, drive forklift truck in, in, in this case and um, it, it just gives us a, um, uh, a the, the supporting document that we are using to deliver that training itself. So, you know, we can add pictures, any kind of document you can have here. This is just a PDF that uh, we have uploaded. But uh, the great thing about this is that when a, a, an auditor actually asks you to produce the, um, let's say, the training or the document that you have got signed off by the, the, the member of staff, then you have that automatically attached to the training record. Um, rather than having to, you know, run around the factory floor or the warehouse or that, and uh, actually try and find the, the the paperwork that has actually been signed off itself, we can um, set up uh, work groups that this uh, particular document belongs to. Now, this is, um, you know, you can have different work groups, whether it be, you know, goods in, goods out, uh, you know, different processes. Um, then we can have the work group and assign the document to the work group, and then the person gets assigned to the work group in in the the employee record itself. Um, the approval manager uh, management process, well we can assign approvers there and also we can see any uh, previous revisions that we actually had um, of that document itself. So what, what I had, um, you know, with a lot of people actually find um, in working with a lot of companies is when you use paper-based uh, documents to deliver training, um, a typical thing that happens within organizations is that uh, whoever's delivering the training, they may actually print off a hundred copies of this document to actually train the different staff and get the, the, the documents signed off. But what has happened is that there may have been some changes to that document um, uh, before them hundred copies of, of, of that document have actually been used up. And, uh, you know, the person delivering the training um, doesn't actually be training the employees on the most up-to-date uh, copy of that document. So what can happen is come audit time, and we see this quite a lot, is, is where paper-based systems are being used, come audit time, the, uh, you know, when the auditor asks for a random, you know, they may randomly ask for a, you know, a trainee, let me see their training records, their, um, you know, their document sign off, and the two don't actually tie in. So, you know, the, the training that has been given has been on version one, when you may be three versions down the line. So, um, you know, again, this uh, particular platform makes sure that your trainees are actually being trained you know, in a paperless way, but always make, sh make sure to, to be trained in the actual current version of the document itself, because as we know, then that goes into a non-conformance that again can actually affect your grading. Okay, so that's the document management and how we manage that. Um, and we're just going to take you in now to the learning management side, um, and this is where we, we do set up our um, uh, employee training records. 
We have the dashboard here. I'm just going to take you through the dashboard uh, very quickly. We can see um, that I am actually running according to all my training records and document records uh, that I need to get signed off and all the training that I need to produce um, then and all the, um, all, all the um, procedures that I need to get through, then I'm running at 16% here. Um, that's not a great compliance rate, um, but again, you know, you'll, you'll start off low and, and uh, you'll, you'll start to move all, uh, all the way around to the uh, green side itself. And we very much work with you uh, to, to, to obviously increase that um, compliance levels themselves. Uh, down at the bottom here, we've got the top non-compliance courses uh, and these uh, courses and documents. So we can see, okay, here's the documents. These are our um, uh, group learner or our um, uh, course catalogs that uh, we can see the training that is actually due on them. We can look at the health and safety policy and see, okay, there's 57 uh, instances of that training that is due. If I click on the button, button there, the view button, that will take me in and actually show me uh, the uh, individuals that uh, that do um, actually need the training there. We can see that there's only uh, one person that uh, has been put in the grace period. All the rest of them have not uh, completed um, and uh, that, that really is something then that, uh, you know, each manager needs to pick up in terms of the training that uh, we need to do for the individuals. Over uh, at the right-hand side here, what we see is the manager non-conformance chart. Now, if, if you work uh, as, a, as a manager basis, um, then we can uh, set up the employees. What employees does the uh, managers take responsibility for? And here we actually see the, um, the non-conforming uh, managers or the top, uh, it's the top 10 in this case is only um, five there, non-conforming managers uh, with the, the most amount of training that they need to, to really push through. So we can see Dom, Dom James is 328, whereas Andrew Matthews uh, has got 18 there. So Andrew, Andrew seems to be doing a good job, but you, you know, probably Dom and Mohan, um, you know, would need to, um, you know, get a, a little bit of a squeeze on and, and delivering some training there. So uh, that's the learning management dashboard. I'm just going to pop in quickly to the employee training plan to show you quickly how we set up the, uh, the training plans themselves. I have got William Burke here. I'm just going to randomly select his, um, his record. I can, we can have uh, pre-start employees, we can have live employees, and we can also have archived employees. So, you know, anyone that's left, we can always run the reports on, on levers and that as well if we need to. There's a little bit of information on William Burke and his record, a photograph. A lot of people talk to us about how they have to um, provide training, but it can actually take them maybe half an hour to locate the person because they have no idea. They know their names, but they don't know what they look like in larger environments. So, again, we've given you the ability to have the photograph there and it's available on the tablet when uh, you go to train them. Um, we set up their training plan. This is uh, William's training plan and we can see again what he has completed, what he hasn't completed and um, you know what, what we can also do is actually have a look at the training that he has completed and, and, and view the, uh, the, the courses that, that he has completed as well. This is an example of our course uh, uh, one of our courses that has actually been completed via uh, a keypad system. So um, what we actually have the ability to do, or even from the tablet or e-learning, um, you have the ability to, to see the course uh, questions. So we can see here all the, um, the, the, the procedure or the, the, the course name here, when it was completed on, the pass rate and what William's score was. We can see the questions that were asked in the assessment we can see the correct answer. We can also see the, the answer that William provided and whether he was right or wrong in his answer. Now, this allows us to, um, uh, what this allows us to do is to, to actually really see where we need to provide some further knowledge to William for all the answers that he may have got wrong or where he may have failed the assessment itself. So, you know, it's a good way of developing personal development of that employee. I um, can view the certificate from the record, the um, employee record themselves. So, again, 
when an auditor is actually looking for the certificate to show that this employee has actually undertaken and, and you know passed that particular uh, piece of training, then again we um, can produce that on the spot itself. Now all our training courses are actually endorsed by the CIEH, um, you know, so uh, they are ready to go there as well. So here we can see uh, as part of the um, training plan that William has and his training record, we can see that um, he belongs to two different work groups there. So again, when documents are actually assigned to the work groups, I don't then need to go in and assign that document to William because that automatically gets assigned to him as being part of that work group. And here we have the assigned managers uh, and if I want to assign another manager, someone else takes response, different responsibility in a different shift, then I can again, you know, assign that back to them. So I'm just going to pop out of that, but it, it, it shows you how easy it is to manage the employee training plan. Um, from here, I'm just going to, to pop into the um, learning manager reports and show you a little bit, um, uh, again, more detail from a management perspective uh, as to the information that you can actually uh, get via the, uh, the platform itself. Now, I'm just going to pop in and uh, pick up uh, one, of the, um, one of the managers here. I'm just going to randomly uh, select one of the managers from, beg your pardon, I'm a little bit slow on this, the, the internet. So, uh, okay, the manager matrix report. I'm just going to select, uh, let's say, Barry Harper here. What we see here is a list of all the managers. How many total training plans uh, that they have assigned to them as part of their employee, uh, they, their responsibility for, for staff members? Uh, how many fall into the grace period and how many have not been completed, the total completed count and any training courses that have expired so that that manager can then actually provide refresher training uh, to that uh, member of staff. Okay, so I'm just going to view the report itself and um, what this does actually show me is one of two things. We, we can see uh, going across the top here, we can see all the procedures that that person needs um, trained in and we can see the employees. So these are all the employees with the, the, um, the training plan that they have. What is in the grace period, what is not available, anything in grey they haven't got assigned to them, what hasn't been completed and, and certainly what has been completed. So what I'm going to show you now, if I scroll across to the right hand side, uh, the employee names are here on the left. If I scroll across the right hand side, what it actually tells me is uh, how compliant each employee is. Okay, so we can see some are doing better than the others, um, some not very compliant at all. Uh, Anne Marie Doohan here, um, she's probably the, the, the best performing in terms of, of training. Um, but these are quite low rates, so, you know, again, um, you know, if an auditor arrives on site, looks for you to provide uh, proof that, you know, that you are training your staff, um, you know, to make sure that uh, they understand the principles of uh, health and safety and that, um, you know, you're probably going, going to get into a bit of trouble because randomly if they select any of them, these employees, most of them haven't done anything. So. Um, you know, it, it gives good visibility for that. It also, um, from a training management and coordinating training perspective, uh, what it does, if you look down the bottom, it actually tells me how compliant that that uh, particular training, that piece of training or that procedure uh, is within my organization. So we can see, okay, there's some of these, uh, you know, don't apply, of course, but our health and safety policy, okay, well, nobody's actually read it, okay, so that poses big risk to me within my organization, so what I might do then is to actually organize um, a health and safety uh, training course of which we can run in bulk and, and run through our keypad system, the, the, the group learning um, uh, system itself, and we've seen lots of customers that have done this on a regular basis where they're maybe in jeopardy of, of losing a particular supply contract, because they haven't got uh, their, you know, hundreds of staff actually, you know, trained in different in different uh, procedures or different disciplines. So what they've been able to do, like, I mean, we had one customer recently that uh, was able to roll out two different training sessions for uh, 380 people across two days. So, um, you know, that's what the keypad system allowed us allowed them to do, and enabled them to to have that check in the box and and provide the evidence back to the client again to prove that they had actually. Uh, 
um, you know, corrected that non-conformance itself. Okay, so that's the uh, training plans. I'm going to quickly pop into the audit manager here, um, and, and and again in the same way we have the outstanding um, corrective actions from the um, from the auditing side. We also have the uh, outstanding corrective actions uh, that have been assigned to each assignee. Now we have the audit template template summary table going down the bottom or going down the left hand side here. Uh, how many um, audits of that uh, title had actually been the internal audits that have actually been completed? And here we see the um, uh, BRC standard, uh, the food safety standard in this case, how many of them have been um, completed and when the last one was that you had done. Uh, we can see the outstanding corrective act act sorry, actions table here and the summary there, uh, when the corrective actions was um, uh, created, um, who it was created by, who it was assigned to, and the number of days outstanding. So, you know, them corrective actions can be assigned to anyone, whether it's an employee, whether it's a, a supplier, uh, for example, as well. And we can manage that whole process um, through that uh, particular process itself. Now, um, what I'm going to do is uh, pop at the stage back into my um, presentation because what I really want to do at, at, at this stage is to actually show you through the use of um, the uh, tablet slides how we, um, how we actually deliver and, and can undertake the audits and also you know, different training side of things uh, through the tablet itself. And this is what makes our, our platform completely paperless um, and what really pushes down and reduces your risk um, by using the uh, paper-based uh, paper systems itself. So, you know, within the audit manager side, we set up, uh, yeah, we, we actually set up our, um, we set up our audits, or audit templates, and then what actually happens is that they become available uh, to us to uh, undertake on the tablet. So, I'm just going to pop through the, uh, the tablet apps here quickly so that you can get a bit of a, a visual on them. This is our uh, area as we log on to the tablet app. Um, you know, we see these four four different areas. So we've got the audit manager, learning manager, document manager, and performance manager. Uh, what we'll look at first of all is the training um, side of things, the learning manager. So we can go into training plans. We can also, as a manager, uh, get access to manager reports. We can also get uh, access to training courses. So again, let's say, for example, I've got a forklift driver, uh, a forklift truck driver, um, whose uh, truck has broken down, the engineer is actually trying to fix it, then why not, uh, with a tablet, uh, you know, from a manager's perspective, actually take the, uh, the tablet, look at the employee, see what training or documents that he hasn't actually signed off, policies that he's maybe not read uh, and signed off, get them to do it whilst they're on that downtime and actually, um, you know, you have the electronic sign off uh, that they can do after they have have signed off that, uh, that that document and that automatically gets uploaded and uh, you know it's an automated process back to the uh, platform itself. So you're making use of every piece of downtime that that employee is to increase their actual compliance and push down your risk in terms of BRC auditors actually arriving and finding a non-conformance in terms of your training. This really gives access, and it's just, a, again, a visual to the employee. Uh, this is uh, me as a manager logging on. I have got a list of all my employees there. I can see what, uh, you know, the numbers, uh, a breakdown of the numbers, how compliant they are, how, how they're not there on the right-hand side, the compliance rate. Um, if I go into uh, a, an employee record, there we can see Stephen Allen. Um, this is all the courses that he needs to uh, complete or ones that he has actually done. Um, so what I can then do is find courses that he hasn't actually done and uh, let him, or documents that he hasn't signed off and, and let him do that. Uh, when he's read the document, as I said, here's the uh, sign off uh, in terms of Stephen's um, uh, signature. We also have the manager signature, signature as well. Your managers uh, are pre-recorded on the platform so that they don't have to keep signing it over and over again. Um, and any supporting document uh, is, is also attached so that you can always get uh, access to the document that they have been trained on and signed off there. Um, this is just a, an example of one of our courses, the Food Allergen and Labeling uh, Awareness course that um, 
that uh, is being launched through the tablet and as I mentioned our courses um, can be actually run through the tablet, they can be run through our keypad system or you can give remote access um, to, to people that uh, maybe want to do it from home or indeed if you have people working off site and maybe not on, on site um, uh, then they can get access to, to complete that and all the results and that again are uploaded onto the platform and will be available um, on the platform itself. This is the auditing side, um, so here we have the auditing uh, templates, the audit schedule, corrective actions and BRC self-assessments and our, our good, goods inwards audit. Uh, this is our audit schedule from here, what we can actually see and again this is just a replica of what is actually on the platform that we have just come out of, but uh, this is the audit schedule. So what I can see here is um, all our audits are, are, um, this is our BRC um, uh, standard audit, the self-assessment. Uh, the schedule date, uh, the completed date, when it was completed, the corrective action count. Well, this one's not started, so it's got no corrective action. So we can say, yes, it's not started, so there's no, been no zero progress on that. If we look down here, we can see the uh, health and safety audit. Well, that's underway. That's with 30% complete on that. And from there, we've got one corrective action that we need to pick up on that. So that, again, from uh, an auditing perspective, is uh, you know really good information that we can get access to. Here we uh, see a list of all our corrective actions, and, sorry, I beg your pardon, all our internal audits. So we see the internal audit list going down the bottom and our uh, statement count, uh, how many statements are within this, how many things uh, do I need to assess myself on. So what I would do is to select the actual audit that I'm, I'm, I'm taking. We run through, um, uh, this, is a, a, this is a corrective action that I have raised from the audit. So we run through the, um, okay, uh, the, the, the question or the assessment um, and we can create a corrective action from that. Uh, we can mark the section that the corrective action is applicable to, what the corrective action is uh, required here and I can give it a risk profile, whether it's high, medium, low there. It's uh, assigned to me in this case uh, and it's given a unique ID. Here we can see I've taken a photograph. Um, so in this case, it's uh, please replace place the bulbs. There's no lights in, in, in this particular uh, uh, corrective action or the non-conformance, should I say. So this actually gives me the completed uh, corrective action. Um, and what it says here is that, uh, okay, I have replaced the bulbs and they're working. And here's the photographic evidence that uh, I have provided that they are working and this uh, corrective action has been um, closed. So again, we're providing the root cause analysis, the date that the actual corrective action has been completed. Uh, BRC self-assessments, again, we have them pre-loaded into the system for you to select and run uh, as you see fit. And um, this is just an example here of a uh, like a, a, an assessment area. So it's a section of an audit. In this case, it's the um, the BRC um, uh, self assessment issue seven. So here we can see the statement. Um, any notes that we put in there, we can actually mark if we're compliant or non-compliant um, to the statement. If if it's not applicable, we, applicable, we can mark that as well. If we're non-compliant, uh, you know, we just tap the capture the photograph button here and. Uh, it takes the photograph and also um, you know, provides the section that the uh, non-conformance is uh, applicable to, the corrective action that is required, assign the risk profile, uh, who it's assigned to. Again, we can assign it to an employee, a su uh, supplier or anyone else that, um, that, uh, that, that we assign corrective actions to. So just to round off, that, that really, I suppose, takes us through the platform. Just a, a little bit about the, um, the relationship, I suppose, or how we work with you guys uh, in terms of um, you know, our, our service to, to yourselves or to your clients, should I say. We, uh, on a regular basis, actually do um, provide you with a, um, a risk management report. This is an, a sample of that risk management report. But every month, uh, on the first day of the month, we will actually send you this report that gives you visibility as to your, uh, let's say, all your exposed areas and the areas that are going to cause you or pose you risk in terms of uh, your audits. This is the training and employee um, risk analysis, so what uh, your top 10 there that need um, training and the ones that are causing most of the issue. 
This again is uh, uh, the corrective actions, the outstanding corrective actions by your risk profile. Uh, so we can see, you know, what is most important there. And, and again, you know, we help you to um, proactively manage this, uh, you know, through the uh, the dashboards and the reports that we do send you, you know, because now you have uh, full visibility to the areas of exposure. Uh, relating to your audits. This is your monthly corrective actions by status charts here and um, you know the internal uh, and BRC self-assessment uh, resulting in corrective actions tables. So we can see from the, the pest control audits, well we had six or sorry eight, I beg your pardon, um, uh, corrective actions that had actually come from that in that particular month. So that really is a breakdown um, and uh, I know I've probably uh, carried over in time a little bit so um, our, our question and answer session, I'll try and get through as many of them for you at the minute. I have a few questions here. Um, uh, okay, Helen, um, how long does BRC Manager take to get set up, Helen, you're asking? Um, BRC Manager, well, we, we have tried to uh, make our platform as easy as possible for uh, you guys to deploy. We take a lot of the legwork out of the, the implementation on this. So uh, what we have created, um, Helen, is um, a set of templates, upload templates, that what we will do is we will, you know, we send these to you as part of your implementation um, that you can copy and paste information onto so um, you know it, it avoids this manual entry so you know once we've got that information back I mean you know essentially we set it up and, and you're pretty much ready to, to, to rock and roll in terms of um, you know using it uh, and maintaining it um, you know from that point once we get the information um, you know set up so you know we've had people uh, you know within a week or two weeks actually um, up and running, running on the system um, you know, once they they have invested in it. So I hope that answers your your question there. Steve, you're asking how much it is. Um, okay, well, uh, from a um, a full platform perspective, um, you know, we've got platform pricing, we've got course pricing, we've got pricing on um, Respond Point technology. So for anybody um, wanting pricing on that, uh, you, you know, um, let us know. We can provide you with all of the pricing. But just from a platform perspective. Uh, uh, our auditing um, side is £2,495 per year for three users and that uh, includes your uh, deployment, your implementation and your training and your support throughout the year because again you will maybe make changes um, to the platform or ask us to you know and um, what happens is you know we're uploading all the time and um, you know different information uh, and changes and maybe uh, corrections that you need done so uh, again that, that support is available through uh, throughout that year for that price as well. Um, that's the uh, individual auditing manager or your learning manager R2495 each per year or uh, certainly you can combine the two of them for £4,495 per year uh, which is um, uh, our price tag in euro is £6,495 uh, euro per year for the full-blown quality and compliance management platform or if you want to slice it down and only have auditing or learning, um, then it's three two nine five euro per year. So hopefully answers that. Uh, Kira, you have asked: Do suppliers have to have access uh, to the system to upload their docs? Yes, they do have to have access um, so that they can upload to their uh, supplier record. Um, that I, I might add is is purely their side of the platform. They won't see anything to do with your compliance. Uh, all they will see is the documents that they need uh, to upload, and also any corrective actions that you have maybe assigned to them. So that's all the information that they get. Um, so you don't need to worry about the um, you know them having to uh, informate or having access to sensitive information there um, and supplier access uh, currently is free we don't actually charge suppliers to log on to um, your platform itself so but that does take a lot of work out of um, you know that whole supplier document management uh, Darren um, you're asking uh, can I try before a buy um, <laughs> yeah we, we do have a pilot um, 
processes that we have in place and uh, just actually touching on that and uh, I'm going to round off the session now at the minute but uh, what we will have is the ability for you to um, just a little uh, at the end of the session for you to say if you know uh, what next steps you'd like to take if any um, you know so that'll pop up so if you can hang on at the end of the session um, Darren you, you can pop that in and we'll, we'll certainly pick you up on that um, but uh, yeah I think all that is left um, at this stage for, for me to say is um, thanks very much for joining the session I'm sorry I run over a wee bit and um, you know just to let you know we do have other webinars that we run and, and we do run regular uh, web, uh, webinars itself so um, uh, the next one is on the 22nd of February and that uh, will be uh, entitled a wee bit similar to this one how to embrace paperless quality management with the involved group so if any of your let's say your management team or indeed your colleagues uh, you think that you would like to get them to sit on this then feel free to pass on the invite and log on to our website but all that's left for me to say is uh, thanks again guys for for joining us and um, uh, you know I hope you found it useful uh, certainly if you want to talk to us further uh, you know pop it in at the end um, and we'll pick up with you but uh, we look forward to hopefully welcoming you on uh, other webinars in the future so thanks very much and uh, have a good day Bye-bye now.